Hi everyone, welcome to the Rose Hip Island video diary. This is the April video for 2022, potentially being released in May, but let's see how we go. My name is Hannah and I record my videos from Northern Tasmania in Australia. And my videos are about things that I make and it's mostly knitting, sometimes a little bit of hand dyeing, hand spinning, and lately also a bit of sewing. If you would like to follow me on social media, I am Rosip Island on Instagram. I have a Facebook page for Rosip Island and Rosip Island is actually my, my hand dyeing business that you can find on rosipisland.com. Today is the last day of April and it's coming to an end of our school holidays here in Tasmania. We've had two weeks off and um, we've had Easter and the Anzac weekend and we have mostly just been taking it easy, staying home and relax. We've done some um, day trips and I might insert some photos from a recent day up on Ben Lomond, but mostly we've just relaxed and I've had a bit of time off work which has been nice and I have been doing a little bit of making and I will share that with you today. So I've had to negotiate this time out here in the studio with my children and hopefully I won't get interrupted too many times by little ones that want to play games and things like that but let's see how we go. Today I will focus on knitting projects mostly and at the end of the video I'm going to do some updates um, about Rosip Island, my uh, hand dyeing business. So stay tuned for that if that's something you're interested in. But now I just want to get my heartbeat down <laughs> and relax and um, focus on things that I have made and not worry about other things going on in life and in the world. I hope you will enjoy spending a little bit of time with me and that it's some relaxing time for you. So let's grab <laughs> a drink of our choice. I have some nice tea here and let's get straight into my knitting content. Let's start with what I'm wearing today. I am wearing my Miss Serena tea, a design by Boiler Knitworks or Caitlin Hunter. And I knit this a little while ago using my Merino Linen Singles. And I have no memory of what these colorways are, but it's a, a dark gray and a sort of wine color. Oh, the wine color is a Pinot, the Pinot colorway. And uh, I really enjoyed this knit. I love this yarn base is still my favorite I think and um, it was fun with a bit of lace, a bit of um, cables and the color work. It is a t-shirt which makes it not as wearable I guess as cardigans or jumpers, at least not for me and the climate where I live and the life that I <laughs> live I guess but uh, I do really enjoy. Um, wearing it and I don't do it as often as I would like to but I do it when I can when it sort of is um just that those days when it's the right temperature and I'm doing the type of thing that works with it anyway that's my Miss Serena top and I really like it since my last video I have finished a few things and I have a few things that I'm working on as you can see behind me here, I finished the strange brew top that I was making. I think in the last video, I had realized that it was way too big for my eight year old who I was intending to make it for. Um, basically it came out my size, but um, let's see a short recap. I had this yarn here a 200 gram skein that I had dyed a while back and I just wanted to use it up and get it out of my stash and I had these eight plies in a few different 
colors in my you know single skein dk stash and i put them all together and i figured i would make a fun top for my my daughter and i have a um i have this strange brew pattern by tin can knit which is a great pattern and i have her narcissistic books and some other color work just a color work um patterns charts i guess in books and i put that all together and created the top the strange proof pattern is the um, what i based everything on with the stitch count and everything and i did make the size for my eight-year-old i think i made a size 10 in a dk weight and the pattern is written for fingering weight dk weight and aaron weight i think so i chose the yarn that i had and the size that i wanted to make but i didn't have the right gauge and that's why it actually fits me so i only had 200 grams of this main color so when i figured that it would be my size i just um, bound off the sleeves after a bit of ribbing i should take it down i finished off the sleeves straight away just with a bit of ribbing and then i just continued the body for as far as i could go with the yarn that i had so it's very cropped it goes just about to my belly button um it blocked out quite nicely but it's it's not something that i would really wear i don't know maybe it's a good vest for gardening or something so i'm not sure what's going to happen with it but i finished that one and it was it's always nice to use your own hand dyed yarn and see what it looks like um knit up this is a skein that i just started using some leftover dyes that i had in pots and i just wanted to sort of soak up the leftover dye and these are oh i think these two are from the back room at bendigo and this is a big and design yarn so they were just sort of single skein single 50 gram skeins that i had in my stash so it was fun to use them for something but the main thing with this <laughs> the main thing with this top that was really great is that it actually got me to do the strange brew pattern by tin canids i had had the pattern i had the ebook actually i have the ebook book i had it for quite a while i got it as a thank you for doing a test knit for tin canids and i've been wanting to use it and make my own color work design it has great instructions and as i said before you can base um your stitch numbers on what type of yarn you ha have and your gauge and there's lots of different um you can do a top down bottom up and you can do different sort of construction and they have different color work patterns in there that you can use anyway i've been wanting to make one of those for a very long time but i've just had a mental block because i I just wanted it to be right and I hesitated because I wasn't sure that I would get it right but with this one I didn't worry too much I just went for it and I did the pattern and I realized that it's really easy and it doesn't matter if you don't know exactly what you want your end result to be you can just start it and keep going and um it works really really well so yes this was sort of really good kickoff to use that pattern um so i'm really happy that i did that even if the result of the garment is completely different to what i had imagined and it might not even be something that i use a few other things that i have finished are some smaller projects and i'll show you first something that i was working on last time and that's these socks they're my Hermione everyday sock with a fish lips kiss heel I have been working on them for a while 
The yarn that I used is my BioSock, a sock yarn with merino and biodegradable nylon. It's a base that I have in my shop. This is the coral colorway and I just wanted to um, knit that up and um, see what, what it was like. I'm so happy with the result. I'm happy with how the fabric feels and what it looks like and how it felt uh, knitting with. And the Hermione Everyday Sock is always a great pattern. It just seems to work for most things. I do replace the heel with the Fish Lips Kiss heel. It just works better for me. And the true colour is more sort of like it looks back here. You don't see the light and dark colours contrasting as much as you do when you put it up on the camera. So that's those that I finally finished, which felt great because I've had a few socks on the go that I just sort of started to have something easy to work on but they just seemed to multiply and nothing got finished so finally finally I got these um, completed and yes I'm very happy with them and then I finished a couple of hats I don't think that I had finished these I, well I know that I didn't finish one of, uh, start one of them last time but I might have started this one not sure this is a fits the whole fan beanie by cozy up knits i've made this pattern now i think five times at least um before i have made it just sort of without the brim not not so long that i could fold the brim but i decided this time i had enough yarn to just keep going made it for my 11 year old she she said that she wanted a hat that was green and blue uh, so what I did was that I put together a worsted weight merino linen I don't know if I have these somewhere no I don't have the yarns here anymore I think I showed it last time I can't remember now but yes it was a blue no a green merino linen worsted weight a blue alpaca silk so that's sort of a fussy like a mohair silk and a teal blue sock yarn and I think that was it those three so I got this result and she's been wearing it a lot um, and it's a very, it's a very nice fabric. It's, it has sort of, you know, like silk, it's a bit cool to the touch. It has a little bit of that feeling to it. It's quite heavy and that's probably the worsted, um, weight merino linen. I think that would make it heavy. So I made that one. And then I asked my eight-year-old what colours she would like for a beanie. And this is what I made for her. Same pattern. And for this one, I used a mohair silk. For this one, actually, I have the yarn. Sorry. A mohair silk in this green. And I dyed all of these. And I dyed the other ones as well, except for the alpaca silk. I had this one skein of a glittery sock yarn that I dyed as well. A merino silk. That is a base that I have in my shop as well. Those two I have in my shop. And then I had a little bit of my delicious sock base in a pale yellow. It's so pale that you can't see it on here. Um, so those four I used. For this one and they were the colors that she put together herself so this feels um yeah it also feels heavy it, it's more fluffy and not as sort of it does have silk in it actually but it doesn't have that same um cool feeling as much as the other one so it's just interesting how the different 
fibrous um, workup, I guess. So I've got some good stuff made into something. It's not so much that I want to get stuff out of my st stash. It's that I want to make my stash into something. Um, I don't worry too much about having stash sitting there. But um, it just feels unnecessary when it could be beautiful items. So it's always really nice when I can make my stash into something. Stash that has been sitting around for a while. And a lot of these, um, for these two, um, there were a lot of skeins. There were sort of sample skeins when I had been dying and skeins that were a little bit off. So I didn't put them up for sale in my shop. So they're, um, it's not stash that I have actually gone out buying to make something. It's just stash that I ended up with um, because of my dying business. And you know, any, it, there's nothing wrong with the yarn. And I, I, I you know, love the colors and I love the yarn bases, so I'm really happy that I'm able to make them into something. So that's uh, the stuff that I have finished um, since I last recorded a video. So we talked about the Strange Brew before and how I've made this garment and how it didn't quite turn out the way I had in my mind, <laughs> but it was still a good outcome in a way. But of course I had to try again and it was a bit of a challenge to actually make it work the way that I wanted. So I went into my stash again and dug out some other yarn and I had figured that from the gauge with this that if I made the Aran weight smallest adult size I should get the size for a 10 year old was that was what I thought that yeah <laughs> that's what it looked like that's not necessarily the truth um but that's what I wanted to try next because I I've just I'm at a point with my knitting and with how much time I have that I I don't adjust my gauge to fit a pattern I just need with whatever gauge I get that I'm comfortable with and then I, I adjust the pattern <laughs> for my gauge <laughs> that I, I know that you know if you want to get exactly what the design says you need to get the right gauge but I'm I'm not doing that and I'm aware that you know things don't always turn out um uh how i expect but then i'm fine with that i'm totally happy with that so i went into my stash to see if i could find some other things and i had this recycled wool from the bendigo woolen mills back room that i got i think it was the first time i went to bendigo and went to the bendigo the australian sheep and wool show um and I actually made myself a flax using this. It's 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 a really beautiful yarn. It is a grey, but it has, because it's recycled, I think it has a lot of leftover bits in it. So it has a little bit of a green and pink tint to it. So I did make a flax out of it, and it was really great, but it has been peeling quite a bit which is totally um, expected with a recycled wool because I do think that the leftover bits and pieces that they used would have been you know some smaller uh, length of fiber which means that it will easily peel so that flax that I have made of this it's not really I don't even I don't I don't even know that I have it in my wardrobe anymore. I don't know if I gave it away. But it was just I had washed it in washing machine a few times, so it wasn't it was smaller than when I made it and it it just looked a bit scruffy. And I got a lot of wear out of it, so I was really happy with letting it move on to someone else. 
but I still had a skein and a bit of this yarn and it's 200 gram skeins DK white so I figured I could use that as my main color and then I still wanted to use that same yellow that I have in this one but then I got some other skeins out because the purple and the pink in here they're five plies so they're sport weight yarn so with the color work they don't look that great they don't look so even because it's different weight of um yarn so i got another purple out which is also big undersigned these two are both big undersigned it's an australian yarn company that um are no longer in production they don't i think they've closed down i don't know if you can get hold of the yarn anymore but they used I don't know if it was merino cross that they spun up anyway i had these two skeins so i just got 50 grams of a couple of different colors the way back just to try out the base and then i had this pink which is a dk weight i think it's um a super fine merino australian country spinners is that what it's called just one of their um, sample skeins that i got hold of so i had those and that and I started again and again now this time using a um, using the Aaron weight smallest adult size instructions for top down and I got this and again like I did on this one I think I spoke about that in my last video I tried I was thinking about my daughter and her personality and the colors that suit her and everything when I was making up the, the design. And again, I used the, these color work patterns from a few different books I have um, and came up with this. And I tried to, I was going, going to do a pink border and a yellow one and then a purple but it just ended up being the yoke ended up being too long then so then I just needed some um a smaller pattern and I wanted to because I used the yellow and purple here I wanted to do two color down here to sort of finish it off and then I have also used that uh, not that but I've used all three colors before the ribbing at the sleeve and the body. So I thought that I was about to finish this, as you can see. And I, I've been doing the sleeves on the smaller circular needles, but I have them on the longer one now because I got my daughter to try it on. I've been measuring it, measuring it against a jumper in my daughter's wardrobe. But then I realized that that jumper was probably on the small side for her. She's sort of grown out of it. So I tried it on her and i had i had given up on that it would on that it would fit her i thought this will have to go to a smaller child and again felt a bit disappointed because it's sort of custom made for her so i tried it on her and actually it it does fit her over the shoulders and the width of it but i've made it too short but I do have more of my main color so what I will do is I will keep going on this sleeve and try it on again and get it a length that fits her and then I'll just have to undye this make this sleeve longer and then I think I think I'll still have yarn left I will undo the bottom of the body and make that as long as I can and hopefully she will be able to get somewhere out of this for this winter season that's what i'm hoping and the reason that normally i would probably just go okay well fine i'm i'm done with this now i'll just you know give it to someone else that it will fit because i sort of feel like i'm done with this project but reasons for not doing that and actually putting a bit of time and effort into it to make it her size is partly as i said i made this color work yoke with my daughter in mind and sort of custom made for her 
but also because of this yarn and how I know that it um, wears. I do think that I might need to hand wash it and, you know, be careful. And I don't think it's a yarn that's suitable for a garment that I give away to someone else. Um, if it's something, someone that I know that I give it to, I can explain and give some sort of instructions of how to treat it. But I don't know, then I'm you know, worried that the garment won't get used. And if I give it away to someone I don't know, they will have no idea and they might just wash it in a machine and end up with, you know, a pile of just filtered wool. So that's what I'll try. I'll try to make it something she can wear <laughs> at least a couple of times. Um, so that's the plan with that. But that's, you know, it's nice quick knit, excellent. Um, and I want to keep making more DK weight um, color work jumpers. It's, it's really fun. It's really fun to see them grow. It's really fun to be able to do all the, um, you know, sort of designing it yourself. And yes, it's really fun because it does, you can do all those things of changing, you know, shape if you want to, changing colors and the patterns, but because it's a DK weight, it, you can do all that without spending too much or without spending a lot of time on it because it's quite quick to get it done. All right, that was a lot of talk about my strange brew jumpers. <laughs> Other things that I have been working on. Let's see. Let, I have my other socks here, so I will show them first. Let's see. I have uh, socks in here. Some other socks I've been working on. And I think when I started my um, break for Easter and had some time off, I think that's when I sort of got stuck into finishing a few heels on my socks because I'd been knitting them at work in my breaks. I just did sort of the leg, just easy um, knitting in the round knitting. And I knew that I needed to get those heels done at home and then I could have the knitting as work knitting again. So I completed one of these socks that I've been working on. This is a just a vanilla sock with a fish lips kiss heel. I'm sure I've been showing this to you before. Still need to kitchen as a toe, but the first sock is done. I'll show you the yarn. It's a not just socks from Spotlight. Very inexpensive yarn with bamboo in it. So I got that just to try the with the bamboo content. And I started my second sock and I'm now at the point where I need to put a heel in again. <laughs> and you might be able to spot here that that doesn't look quite right. No. Um, after this first pink here, there was a cut in the yarn and just a knot. I could probably show that to you. Maybe. Yep, it was just like that. And then straight into this other uh, section of the colour, which meant that I got out of the pattern repeat, I guess, and it repeated the same thing again, which is fine, doesn't bother me too much, and I don't expect anything more than that from a yarn that I bought for, you know, not very much at all. Yeah, I don't think um, it's fair to expect um, more, really. You can be lucky and not have any knots at all. I didn't have any knots in my first sock, but it just happened in this one. So that's... Um, Sock and a half, I have to put a heel into that so I can bring them back to work. Um, the yarn does feel different with the bamboo content. I'm not sure how much bamboo is in it. 
it's 50 wool, 25 polyamide and 25 bamboo. And it does feel different. Uh, has more of that sort of cold silky feel. So not the woolly wool and I think my gauge is a bit looser without all the, with less wool content, it just doesn't fill up as much the stitches. So that's those. They'll be good hard wearing socks, I think, when they're done. And then I have another pair of socks that I also sort of completed the first sock. Just plain vanilla with the fish lips kiss heel. So I completed the first sock that I have been working on at work and then I've only just started the second sock. So this will be my plain in the round work knitting for the leg bit. And hopefully I will have made the other heel and I can work a bit on that and then do the heel on this and yeah, just work it that way. This is a painter nail. Colour 4444. So they're just sort of happening in the background or on the side of other more exciting things, I guess. What else am I working on? I'll show you. So then I have a couple of fingering weight uh, garments that I'm working on and they've been going on for a while. That's okay. This is my tweed plain jumper. This is a jumper that I am making based on the stripes pattern by Andrea Maori. I made a stripes jumper actually using the same merino linen singles yarn. So I made that with the stripes and I really like the fit of it so I wanted to make one that was just in one color and I chose this yarn from my stash it's a yarn that I got out of a D stash and it's Debbie Bliss Fine Donegal so I had 300 grams of this tweed yarn and I figured that would be perfect for this so I've used the Andrea Maori pattern but without striping and I have maybe I don't know another five to ten centimeters left on the first sleeve just knitting them straight um, and the body's all done I'm making this even though I really like my stripes version of it I am making this a little bit longer in the body uh, and maybe the sleeves as well because I just want it to be a um, nice, comfortable jumper that will, I think with, oh, I don't know. I just figured um, it'd be nice to have one that is a bit longer, even though I like the length of my striped ones, striped one. And honestly, I think I was just knitting on the body and it just ended up being a little bit longer. <laughs> so that's what I went with. Can't wait to wash this and block it. See what happens when the yarn blooms a bit. Hmm. So that's one thing that I'm slowly making progress on. And then I think the last thing, well, sort of the last thing, and then I have a couple of planning and swatching that I've been doing. But the last thing that I've actually finished all the knitting on is my Saga cardigan. cardigan. This is Saga by Venture Roald, and this is a pattern that's available from Yarbu, a Swedish yarn company. And they had a knit along with this earlier this year. And I started making it for that. Um, let's see. I've modified it in a few ways. This is a fingering weight yarn. And my main yarn that I've used is Sölje. 
uh, Norwegian yarn. It's fingering weight, 100% Norwegian wool, I think. Um, so I had some of this that my mum gave me and some that I bought from a D stash. And then there is actually a little bit of very pale purple in there that is, it's not this one, but it's a Jameson Smith. Anyway, oh, lost that one. Uh, the pattern has a longer body and it has color work on the sleeves as well. I decided to make mine a little bit more cropped and when I was about to start the sleeves I thought this is never ever going to be complete if I'm going to do the color work on the sleeves because there's a there's a bit of decreasing and a lot of thinking and I just was not at that stage where I could do that so I decided to just knit plain color sleeves just knit them straight and then take them in a little bit before I did a little bit of a cuff. So I did both of them and then I picked up the button bands and my next step now is to reinforce and cut it. I started and what I have been doing and what I've done before is to use the Steaking Tutorial by Tin Can Knits on Tin Can Knits website. It's just a photo tutorial, which I actually prefer photos in a sort of a blog post than videos. Don't know why. Maybe because I can just have it sitting still and not have to worry about pausing and, you know, playing. And... Anyway, I started using the purple. You probably can't see it. I started doing the crochet reinforcing. And I started doubting myself and I thought it doesn't look right. And it's because this is a really woolly wool, it's really hard to actually see the stitches. But I wasn't sure about it. So then I just broke my yarn and I was going to undo it. But because it is a woolly wool, it's sort of stuck in there. So I have to start again and do it. Then maybe also do a seam on my or stitch down on my sewing machine before I cut it open. And then it's basically a matter of weaving in ends, finding buttons, and then it should be ready to wear. Well, I have to wash it and block it. I want to do it fairly soon because I think this would be great um, for wearing this winter. And I made it um, sort of a, a fitted cropped version so that I can wear it with dresses is how I sort of see myself wearing it with dresses well my work with jeans and trousers but I just thought it would be um a more modern style is maybe not the right way to describe it but more my type of garment when it was with plain sleeves and cropped and yeah so that's that one very happy with it and every time I bring it out to look at it I want to make another one and I have quite a bit of yarn like this um, a bully wool and um, fingering weight so I can I don't know if I'll use this pattern again I'll see when I steak it I might use the instructions for this pattern but do use different color work patterns in it i'll see but i i really like it really like it it's great and there the things that i have actually been actively working on in the last few weeks i did um swatch for something that i'm hoping to work on in not too long i have shown you before if you've watched previous videos that i had some nilteden wool from it's a swedish micro mill maybe there's mill and they dye this unspun yarn 
And I had some of that that I bought from a D stash. This is the May colorway. And this yellow is just a very pale yellow. I have four cakes, so I have quite a bit of it. I wasn't sure what to do with this color, and I thought I need maybe to mix it with something. And with the unspun yarn, I know um, from what I've heard from other knitters that have used it, that if you combine it with a merino silk or something like that, it just makes it easier to work with. And one thing that I've had in my stash for maybe three years or so is this Samoa hair silk that has this sort of a bronze glitter thread in it. I only have, I think, four skeins of it, so I don't have a huge amount of it. But I thought these two are two pretty special yarns and it would be fun to combine them. So I've only just started a little swatch. Oh, it looks like that colour. Anyway, uh, and it's it doesn't look like either of these colours, I think. But it's mostly yellow, but I think that uh, dusty pink colour tones it down a bit. I'm not sure. So I've just used one strand of each and... I have a few patterns in mind that I can use for it. It, it has to be, I think, a quite um, cropped top, I think, maybe three quarter sleeve for me to have enough of, of this one, but we'll see. I tried this out and I didn't quite get the gauge that was specified for the patterns that I had looked at. So I might just, oh, I just sort of left it. I have to have a think about it again. Maybe, I don't know if they're good together. But I think whatever colour this is would be quite a nice neutral addition to my wardrobe. We'll see. But that's something that I have also um, worked on a little bit. So now for the last bit of this video because I have not touched my spinning wheel in the last few weeks. Have not been doing any dyeing. I won't share any sewing today, even though I have been doing quite a bit of sewing. Um, it's oh, I don't really have anything to share with that. I find I must say I did make my sewing video, which which was really fun, but. Both for photos and Instagram and videos, I find sewing to be so, how do I describe it? I find it to be sort of flat. Knitting has, in a way, some more, this has more texture. It feels more three-dimensional, whereas sewing, it just looks so flat and not, I guess you have to wear it to be able to see, see it better. So I haven't sort of been sharing a lot of my sewing and recently I've sort of been remaking a lot of the patterns that I have made before so um, pajama pants, 90s, undies for my daughter, I made a couple of dresses for myself and I've used it's all knit fabrics and it's all things that I have made before just new fabrics and it has been really fun and enjoyable my eight-year-old is now addicted to the handmade clothes and she's asked me to make more she said mum the best thing with handmade clothes is that you don't get the tags and it's really comfortable so that was that was good <laughs> that was encouraging so I have a bit of, of fabric that I've picked up in sales and I've um, been down the rabbit hole of eBay and um, fabric remnants <laughs> So I have a bit of sort of inexpensive plain fabrics that I can make more kids clothes from. So I will be doing that. Um, but I have nothing to share today with sewing. And I have actually, because I did so much sewing for a while, I have now put away my sewing machine for a little while and cleared a space here in my studio because I have some other work that I need to do in the next couple of months. Some non-making, non-creative type work. And I have two months until my deadline. 
studying and work that I do outside of my full-time job and I'm just going to do that for another couple of months so I've decided that I'm going to use my studio as a nice quiet space where I can focus so and as a carrot I'm going to have that once I have been through those couple of months I can go crazy with my sewing um, because even though making things is much quicker than knitting it is still something that can take up a lot of hours um, it's not like knitting that you can sit and do it when you're you know waiting or watching tv or something um so yes that's that's what's happening the next couple of months i'm going to try to get some other work done and then um second half of this year will hopefully be a lot um less stressful and i'll have more time for things that i enjoy anyway um, the last thing that I wanted to mention and show you in this video is related to Rose Hip Island and my hand dyeing business. Um, things are, you know, my, my shop is open and I have quite a bit of stock in there. I haven't been dyeing a lot lately because I just cannot fit it in at the moment and I don't want to, I don't have the need to create more stock because I have stock but I don't have a lot of time to promote and you know get my my skeins um up on photos on social media and stuff so it's it's quiet but you know puttering along and it's it's all good it's exactly where I needed to be at the moment um but there will be things coming up that I am very excited about. So even though it's quiet now, I'm hoping it will ramp up a little bit in a couple of months. And the first thing that I'm going to focus on are advent calendars for 2022. A lot of dyers have already started selling their advent cal calendars and I've been a bit quiet with it because I don't like putting up pre-orders too early. It's just a huge commitment, um, both from my side and committing time and material in the future, but also a commitment from anyone who signs up for pre-sales, pre um, you know, with their, um, you know, budget, their money. Um, so I try to leave it as long as I can but I also realize that when there's a lot of advent calendars being advertised people that are looking for advent calendars would like to know the different options out there before they make a decision on you know which advent calendar to go for that will suit their budget or suit what they're interested in so anyway really what I wanted to say is that yes I will be doing an advent calendar again and I have been thinking about my theme and how I want to do it and everything for quite some time and today I'm going to put it all down in specific details and hopefully I will release my pre-orders tomorrow May 1st or at least very soon I'll I'll have the details available tomorrow, even if I don't have the actual pre-orders available just yet. And I always try to do it a little bit different every year to make it more interesting to me and to um, anyone who's interested in getting one of my advent calendars. So what I have decided to do this year is to look at what's available locally to me and make something special from what I have close by. And as you know, most of you probably know, we have the amazing yarn company <laughs> producer in Tasmania, White Gum Wool. And um, Nan has been producing some really amazing um yarn from her sheep and 
she has a new merino silk base fingering base that i have been trying out and i'm really enjoying so that's what i would like to use for my advent calendar this year i feel so happy about being able to source my yarn base from a place that's not far away from me at all and being able to offer a different yarn base to what i have had before so i, I did get uh, some samples from nan at white gum wool and here's some i dyed one undyed one and it is quite different to my delicious sock and soft sock that i have used before and the high twist sock that i used last year this is merino and silk it has 30 percent silk and it's quite a round and plump spun yarn so it looks quite different and when i had dyed it up it looked really different and i thought oh you know you're so used to seeing things in a certain way and if you're not sure about things it, it looks different but i um made my sample skeins into little balls like this and these are just some colors i tried some speckles and i tried sort of over dyeing with a darker color and i just did a few different quick trials of this yarn base and I, I liked it much, much better when I had worked with them a bit. And then I just did a little sample knit. And it looks really great knitted up. It's beautiful and it feels really nice. So what I have decided to do is to do 10 gram mini skeins because I will have to actually wind all my skeins myself and the white gum wool has quite a generous um, meterage per 100 grams so um, sorry I'll, I'll, I think that'll be fine I think with 20 grams you have so much anyway and just because it is um, higher end product it is it, it comes at a higher cost than the regular sock yarn. So I think using the, doing the 10 grams will make it um, more um, what's it called? realistic for me <laughs> to be able to do it. And it will bring the cost down a bit. And I think you'll still have plenty of yarn for several different um, projects. So I'll do 25 10 gram skeins. The, the theme or the name of the advent calendar will be brown paper packages tied up with string. Just, um, it's going to be a more earthy, local type of um, calendar. Um, and I'm really looking forward to it. Again, I'm just changing things up and trying to do things differently. And it makes me having to think about things and, and plan and come up with um, things to go with that theme, which I really enjoy. So that's the plan. So now you know about that if you're interested. Um, I do have some of my sock yarn mini skeins available in enough quantities that I could make up just a few advent calendars with that so if anyone would like an advent calendar but prefer one of my regular sock yarns for it and not the merino silk white gum wool base uh, maybe just send me a message via my um webshop rosyvarland.com and I will sort of um, I can earmark that for you but I like to focus on the merino silk white gum wool base and it is it is different to sock yarn it takes dye differently as you could see from my little sample you can still get very nice saturated colors but you will definitely have a different look to um 
years that I've done very strong, bright uh, colours on the sock yarn. I, um, I have some ideas, 25 mini skeins, 25 colourways is just so many possibilities what you can do. I don't want to say too much about what I'll do. I find that it works out best if I start with something and then that will sort of lead me into the next colorway, next colorway to get my full set. Uh, so I never quite know what it's going to be when I start, but um, it's going to be something that works well together or you can take um, bits and pieces out of the full set and create smaller items so yes that's what's happening that's what's coming and I'm really excited and I hope that um, more people <laughs> will be excited about this the new yarn base and um, doing doing it differently again okay well I I'm going to finish my cup of tea and um, get back to uh, doing things. Go and, and find my my kids and see if maybe they want to play a game or something now that they've been so lovely and they've let me have this time. Let's see when I'm able to get this up on YouTube. It will I will call it my April video even if it's up there in May. Let's see. So I hope you all stay well and that you find time to do the things that you enjoy. Thank you so much for joining me and uh, take care. Bye.